adding more systems to your Sega Genesis Mini. Yeah, you can play Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo, Sega CD, Sega Genesis 32X, PlayStation, arcade games, lot, lot more. So in this video, it's just a quick introduction video of how to add Hack G, how to hack your Genesis, and then add all these games to a USB thumb drive. This is the process. You can mimic it, add more games. Once you get the general idea down, it's very easy to add additional games, emulator cores, everything. So in this video, we're going to cover all those things. We'll start out with how to hack your system. Then we'll get ready to setting up a custom image like this on Hackchi. Then we'll export it to our Sega Genesis Mini and actually boot it up and show you what it looks like towards the end of the video. So you will need to download the latest release of HackG, currently around 3.8, and if 3.9 comes out, the process should be similar. You're also going to need a third-party uh, micro USB cable, something that you use to charge your phone will be just fine. You're also going to need 7-Zip, the Sega Genesis Mini, and some sort of 16 gigabyte or larger uh, USB thumb drive. Downloaded HackG, you went ahead and did 7-Zip, extract it to its own folder, and here's the HackG. I've also pre-downloaded ROMs. This set is a mix of US, European, and Japanese, and hacked. Genesis game, so it's a fairly large collection. Go ahead and get into our program. Go ahead and launch Hackchi. So it even tells you the directions. It's fairly simple, but you can follow along with me here. Now you cannot use the original um, USB cable. Uh, make sure you say allow. All right. So on first boot, you'll notice that we're offline. So let's go ahead and connect the kernel. We need to install a custom kernel. Go ahead and yes, it's fine. So you can leave your controller and your HDMI cable plugged in for this, but go ahead and unplug your power supply. Go ahead and turn it in the on position with it unplugged, and then make sure you have that aftermarket USB cable. Plug that in while holding the reset button on the console. All right, and now it's updating the kernel. There's a green light in that lower left-hand corner now. Let's go ahead and view, and let's go ahead and hide those original games because we're going to be adding all new games. First things first, we want to go to go to modules and go to get to the KMFD uh, repo. And what it's going to do is going to unlock all sorts of emulator cores and retro arc and even some hack games as well. And so I'm just going through here, and you can see you have some like old uh, PC-based games. You can also do like Amstrad, Arcade, Atari. Um, we're going to stick to, you know, NES, SNES, 32X, uh, some handheld games for this tutorial, and PlayStation. So if you notice, though, like each system might have three or four emulators. And so you might want to experiment. You might want to install multiple. Uh, if you've been around the scene for a while, you know which emulators are better for which. But um, each emulator plays certain games better. Uh, but in this video, what you see me installing tends to be emulators that tend to emulate a lot of games. So we're going to start with that. So I'm just clicking around and I'm downloading these modules. And what that's going to, going to do is allow us to install these emulators onto our Sega Genesis Mini. And then that'll unlock pretty much all the games. Now your Sega Genesis Mini does come with a stock emulator. And that emulator will actually run quite a few different games. So you can experiment and I'll show you later how to do that with uh, defaulting your games to different emulators. So you can literally have you know, Aladdin for Sega Genesis and Streets of Rage 2 for Sega Genesis running on two different emulators and you can set that up in this screen here. So all we're doing right now is downloading it and then we still have to install these onto our Sega Genesis Mini. We're gonna do that in just a moment. But you know, check, you can see I'm just you know looking between the two different PlayStation emulators and they'll give you some tips here as far as like which one will run better and why you might choose one over the other. So once I've selected all the emulators I wanna download, I basically took PlayStation, all the Game Boys, uh, both Sega emulators, both for Sega CD and Sega Mega Drive and Genesis because some of those emulators, like for example, Pico, only does certain systems that the Genesis GX does differently. The thing you definitely wanna download is RetroArch. You have to download this, it is your back end. It's going to run your controls and all sorts of other settings. Now you notice there's three options here. I went with the first option, I haven't experimented with the other two, but they seem somewhat sil similar. It seems like a lot of it is aesthetics. There's also an overclock script, and of course, the lawnmower game for Nintendo had to grab that. 
So as you see here, I'm just grabbing a couple more emulators for Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, and now I'm gonna install them onto my Sega Genesis Mini. So you see how easy it is? I just go to install modules, and I'm just gonna put a checkbox, and these are all the emulators I decided to install on this particular build, and then make sure you get RetroArch as well, and then go ahead and press OK. And after this process goes, you have now have these emulators. But now, you need to get ROMs. So we're all done. But now we need to get games. So I have went ahead and hid all my stock games that come on the Sega Genesis Mini. That's why you don't see any of those games in the left hand on the left side here. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm just, I have a CoinOps Next build on my right side. This is just a build I use for my computer that has a bunch of games on it. So I just figure I'll use those ROMs because they were easy to get a hold of. But you know, you can download ROM packs. ROMs are all over the internet. And you can keep most ROMs compressed. You do not need to unzip or unrar them. And as you see, I'm just right clicking and selecting my emulator core. And that's how you change the core out. We're going to be doing this for a bunch of games here. So just follow along. It's the same process for all these different systems. The only thing that's going to change is for systems like Neo Geo and Sega CD, you will need to find their BIOS files, B-I-O-S. Make sure you get those BIOS files. You will need to transfer those over as well. But for example, for PlayStation here, I added R-Type Delta. I went ahead and hit Google to get the proper artwork. What I noticed that oftentimes it'll actually find the artwork for you. You've just let it sit there on the left. Um, otherwise, you can hit the Google button and get it. Now, I'm sick. I selected, you see here, I selected the PSX Rearm. I had to tell it which emulator, when I click on that game in my Sega Genesis Mini, what which emulator do I want it to boot off of? So let's go ahead and grab a Game Boy Color game, for example. We'll go to ROMs and we'll grab Tetris and Super Mario Brothers. So there they are. We click on one. We go ahead and we don't see the artwork, so we can go ahead and go to Google, find the artwork we want, and you can pick whatever artwork you want here, but that was fine with me. And then artwork here. And then I'm gonna right click it and make sure my core is the same. You can also see which core it's on by following the path there. And here you go. I want it on the Game Boy emulator. Apply and close. If you just hit close, it'll just ask you, hey, do you want to apply? And you can go ahead and say yes. And now we're just checking Excite Bike over here. And remember, we installed Nestopia. We just want to make sure we go ahead and click Nestopia. And you can batch this. There's ways to batch it so you could do like a whole system at the same time and set it on a default settings. Here I am adding a Genesis game. Remember, it didn't come with Sonic 3. And I can absolutely just run this Sonic 3 off the original emulator. I don't have to run it off Pico Drive or uh, any other Genesis emulator, but I absolutely can. So yeah, that's why there's no one right answer here. Um, but certain some games do only run on certain emulators. Now here's my um, thumb drive. I'm just gonna go ahead and, uh, uh, it's a 64 gigabyte. I'm gonna go ahead and format it. It's, all this stuff will fit on a 32 or 16 gigabyte. And uh, if you're using a new version of Hackchi, most USB 2.0 or 3.0 devices are gonna work just fine. The uh, other thing I wanna do uh, before I upload this all to my USB drive, the reason I am doing my USB drive, by the way, is your internal storage on this device is very limited. So just get the USB drive. It's it's a lot better, a lot more expandability. So if you see what I'm doing now is I'm actually going to file mess with the file structure. So I went ahead and went to structure and went to custom structure here. And if you notice, I have a little picture of a Genesis. I want to go ahead and add custom photos for all my folders. The first thing I did though is I did sort by console. So if you see, it actually really did a good job for me. The only thing is it this little NES hack game, it put in a weird folder and I'm actually gonna rename the folder. You can just double click. It's just like a Windows Explorer here. You could just you know rename, you can move them around, you could shift games in different folders if you want. And now all this artwork you're seeing here comes with Hackchee. I did not create this artwork at all. And look how beautiful it is. So for example, with these Doom games that I downloaded, I just I was like, oh, what's the closest thing to Doom? Okay, we'll do action. So I just went with action. Because that's cooler to me than just a default thing. But if you'll notice, it actually didn't get the images for these systems, although it named the systems correctly. So now I gotta go over here and you know select the right systems. So Game Boy, double click this, and so on. And I did this for all my systems. The last thing you're gonna see me do here is I do rename some of the, the folders and I move them around just to get it in somewhat of an order so if some random person was playing my second genesis mini they can easily navigate the console and then the last thing i did was just export to usb because remember i formatted it early but off i am going to be using a otg cable and basically you plug one end into the 
Genesis Mini. You notice you have another slot for your power. This is going to my power adapter. And now I've got an extra slot here for a USB device. I'm going to unplug my USB device from my computer and I'm going to plug it into this extra slot right here. All right, so here it is. This is what I've built. I have Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Nintendo 64. I have my NES hacks, my Nintendo, my Super Nintendo 32X, my Master System, my uh, Mega Drive, Sega CD, and PlayStation, and Wood, also known as Doom. So before we launch, uh, when we get into the first game, just load any emulator and go ahead and hit the reset button on the uh, Sega Genesis Mini itself. And then the retro arc menu here, go ahead, go down to controls, go to hotkey setup and change this to hold start. And then now when you hold the start button on your controller, it will get you into this retro arc menu, just like the old system did. Oh, I wanted a nice pattern. I didn't want to get fuel. So there you have it, a down and dirty way to add more games and more emulators to your Sega Genesis Mini. Now there's a lot to cover in this, but I think I got you the basics to get going on this. And you know, really the sky is the limit. Experiment with these uh, emulators. You can try different emulator cores. You can mess with RetroArch and the different hacks to get better performance out of your Genesis Mini. You have lots of options, but this should get you well on your way. Anyways, that's what I think. Let me know what y'all think. Let me know if you have any questions. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.